What is the Black Atlantic? Surely the ocean is blue? Well, yes and no. Paul Gilroy, a philosopher and cultural studies theorist, came up with the phrase in 1993 to explain some aspects of history, philosophy, and what we think about the modern world. Gilroy focused on the Atlantic Ocean and argued that people, ideas, and countries around the Atlantic had been shaped by movement, particularly the movement of ideas, ships, and thinkers. Sounds obvious, right? But there's more. And that has to do with the blackness in the title. Gilroy considers how black identity has been shaped by transatlantic slavery in the Atlantic. And he looks beyond slavery. To break it down, first, the black Atlantic has produced a black identity, but this is not one single thing. It does contain a shared core of the experience of slavery. Yet black people in Senegal or Angola who saw their relatives ripped away and captured and their economy transformed by the slave trade, they are not the same as the people who were ripped away from Africa and brought to the Caribbean or North America or Britain or France or the Netherlands. That's one of Gilroy's key points. He argues against one essentializing identity for all black people while reminding us that there are unifying aspects that create solidarity among black people around the world. They're not the same, but there are some things that bind them together. Two, second aspect. The movement of ships carried ideas and goods. It carried the trade that contributed toward globalization and modern ideas of democracy and freedom. But that movement was also a movement that included forced migration, slavery. So racial oppression is at the heart of many things we think of as the highest achievements of the modern political and intellectual system. The glories of the Enlightenment were built on the dark underbelly of racial thinking. We don't have, to borrow Adam Smith's phrase, the wealth of nations without the slave ship that helped create it. We can't understand the idea of capital and property if we don't acknowledge that huge groups of people were denied access to paid labor and the ownership of land. Many of the thinkers who inspired the American, French, and Haitian revolutions on which modern human rights are founded dodged, ducked, and dived on the question of slavery. To carry this point further, the disciplines of history and philosophy have traditionally overlooked black intellectuals who were deeply mobile and who trained in both America and Europe. These thinkers transform Western philosophy when we take their ideas seriously. W.E.B. Du Bois, for example, was the first African-American to gain a doctorate at Harvard, trained in Berlin, defined the notion of double consciousness. This is a sense of seeing yourself from the outside, looking at yourself and seeing failure, absence, lack, black. Imagine a young child in the playground who has always felt like an equal, and suddenly, hearing other kids taunting them for their skin color, that child sees themselves and their world as forever changed, darker, a different mind-body dualism than that of Descartes. Another of Gilroy's examples is based on the true story of Margaret Garner, a slave who escaped in 1856, fleeing across the frozen Ohio River. When she was recaptured, rather than allowing her children to be raised as slaves, she killed her infant daughter, slit her own baby's throat, and stabbed her two other kids. The story, the basis for Toni Morrison's novel, Beloved, is horrifying. Seems irrational, hysterical, emotional. But it is totally rational if you believe in freedom and bodily autonomy, but your children are being consigned to slavery. So it overturns Western binaries of reason and emotion it's the kind of paradox and human insight you get when you start investigating a black Atlantic. Finally, music, perhaps the best example. We can literally hear how movement around the Atlantic Ocean has shaped history when we listen to popular music. Music shows us how land-based national histories can never really reflect human experience. The Beatles, quintessential British sound, 
were inspired by African-American blues music. I can never quite understand jazz, blues, or hip hop if I don't understand how transnational exchange shapes the music. The sounds, the harmonies, the beats trace back to various African regions, but they wouldn't exist without the cross-fertilization of European folk tunes imported by the New World, imported to the New World in ships. Music is movement and it moves us. It circulates, innovates, improvises on the beat of the past. How does a bastard, orphan, son of a whore and a Scotsman dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean by providence impoverished in squalor grow up to be a hero and a scholar? Asks Lin-Manuel Miranda of Puerto Rican descent who famously performed this lyric about founding father Alexander Hamilton to Barack Hussein Obama, black president in the White House. Lin-Manuel Miranda transformed the musical, a hybrid Anglo-American genre drawing on European traditions, into hip hop. Hamilton opens in London's West End this Christmas, 14 years after Gilroy's book appeared and challenged us to reflect on how music, people, and ideas moved across oceans and changed the world. That is the Black Atlantic at work. I invite you to explore more through readings, courses, and of course, listening to music.